During a code, please make sure to use the medical code form located in the red code binder that's on top of your code cart. This form is so important and so helpful because it reminds you about the data that you need to collect during the code, such as the date and time and location of when the code started, to collect the names of the providers that were present during the code, the interventions that were done for the patient, the medications that were administered, the shocks that were provided, and it also reminds you to document the outcome of the code. This form will be helpful when you're completing your code documentation in the code narrator. There's one thing I want to note. On this medical code form, there's no section to write down vital signs. What I recommend is that during the code, when you're writing down the vital signs, to just write them on the back of this form. Let's start documenting a code. The first thing that we're going to do is document when the code started. So let's go to code start and click on it. Let's say the code started at 12 p.m. So let's put in 12 p.m. on December 2nd, 2023. And let's press accept. And then you'll see that the code start is now documented for 12 p.m. today. Let's start documenting our vital signs. So let's click on the vital signs section and here we now have an opportunity to document the vital signs that we obtained during the code. The most important thing that we need to do before we continue with this flow sheet is ensure that we type in the correct time that we obtained those vital signs. So the first time that I obtained vital signs during this code was at 12 o'clock. The temperature was 34 degrees Celsius axillary. The pulse was zero, and that was by the carotid. The respirations were zero. The BP was zero over zero. And the O2 sat was also zero. And now let's press accept. And you'll see that the vital signs were now documented for 12 o'clock to be 34 degrees Celsius, a pulse of zero, a respiration of zero, BP zero of zero, and an O2 set of zero percent. Now let's continue to document all the other vital signs that I obtained during the code. I obtained vital signs at 12.01. The temp was 34. The pulse was 0 on the monitor. Respirations are still 0. BP is still 0 over 0, and the O2 sat improved slightly to 70%. And now I'm going to press accept to document these vital signs for 1201. And you'll see for 1201, the vital signs were documented. You'll notice though that the the vital signs were documented above everything that we previously documented. Um, I like everything to descend in chronological order, so what I'm going to do is press the time button over here, and that will make everything descend from the start of the code at top to everything that happened afterward. Now let's continue to document the other vital signs. I'm going to click on vitals. The next time I took vitals was at 12.03. The temp was 34, the pulse was still zero on the monitor, 
respirations are now 16 because the patient is now vented. Let's put a ventilator. BP is still 0 over 0 at this time. And the O2 set is 100% because again, the patient is now vented. And I'm going to file these vital signs for 1203. Great. Now the last time I take vital signs is going to be at 1205. Please remember to make sure always to put the right time um, for your vital signs. The temp was 35.5. The pulse is 55, so we have a pulse now. And that's going to be on the monitor. Respirations are 16 because the patient was vented. The BP is 60 over 40. Great, we have a blood pressure. And the O2 set is 100%, because again, the patient is on a ventilator at this time, and I can put in the comment section, ventilator. I'm going to press accept to document my vital signs for 1205, and you'll see that it falls correctly into the timeline. So great, now I've documented all the vital signs that I obtained during the code. Now, I just want to emphasize the importance of documenting the time accurately. Because let's pretend that we mistakenly put 1205, for example, for these vital signs. If I click on it, I can't adjust the time. No matter how hard I try to delete this time, I can't. It's already documented. So you can't erase it once it's documented. So make sure when you're docu documenting anything in the code narrator that the time is correct. Now let's document the rhythms the patient was in during the code. To document the rhythms, you're going to click on rhythms in the left side of the code narrator. Now, the first rhythm that I assessed was at 12.01, and the patient was in asystole. So I'm going to select 12.01, select asystole, and then I'm going to accept to file this rhythm. And then you'll see that it falls correctly into the timeline for 12.01 rhythm asystole. The other rhythms that I assessed during the code were at 12.03, the patient was in V-fib. So I'm going to type in 12.03, select V-fib, then press accept to file this arrhythmia. And then you'll see that it falls in the timeline correctly under 12.03 rhythm V-fib. The last rhythm that I assessed during the code was sinus Brady. So I'm first going to put in the time that I assessed it, which was at 